an honor to be with all of you again this year, and we have another uh, very interesting CEO to talk about uh, internet-related issues, and in particular about uh, his company and the technology that they've deployed. Uh, Zello Incorporated CEO Bill Moore joined State of the Net to tell the story of building and scaling Zello, a simple walkie-talkie app that has wide-ranging applicability, from saving lives in disasters to driving efficiency in business. This fall, rescue workers in Texas relied on Zello to find and save flood victims stranded by Hurricane Harvey. It became the communication hub for the Cajun Navy. Mr. Moore has been CEO of Zello for over six years, growing the company's user base to about 100 million. Mr. Moore is also the founder of the audio streaming service TuneIn, which offers thousands of radio stations on demand to more than 75 million users. And today we're going to talk about the power of internet apps like Zello to save lives during emergencies, and of course, the importance of the internet in enabling new technologies and companies like Zello. So, Bill, welcome very much. We're delighted to have you with us today. Thank you very much. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Let's give him a round of applause. <clears throat> Thank you. It's to be here. Tell us more about Zello. You have a free version and a paid version. Sure. So as you, as you explained, Zello is a walkie-talkie app. You download it, put it on your phone. And if anybody's had the thrill as a kid of playing with a walkie-talkie, it, 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 it really brings that. Um, Zello is about live voice communication. Our mission is to improve human flourishing through live voice communication, whether it's for companionship or cooperation solving problems. And it's, it's such a fine medium to work with. Um, you know, the internet today uh, is a, a sterile, hostile place with, um, with lots of text and pictures. And live voice, as we are now, uh, is wonderful because it's real. I can't fake, you know, pauses, not sure what to come up with. Um, but that, that creates a level of intimacy that, that doesn't exist in text or photos or, or other style communication. It demands, voice demands attention from both sides. Um, it creates trust. Um, it's how we most naturally communicate. A, uh, a two-year-old can use Zello. A 92-year-old person can use Zello. And so back to your question, there's two parts of Zello. One's a, a consumer app where we have 120 million registered users. And so they'll use it to, to stay in touch with friends and friends or family um, or people they don't know. And so they can be these, these live channels that are private or public channels. And the other half of Zello, the revenue model really, is that companies use Zello to replace two-way radios as they're deploying mobile apps to their, to their workforce. And so somebody will be rolling out some workflow application and, uh, and, and kind of think, why are we spending you know, $500, $1,500 on these, on these secure radios? They send, they send uh, you know, text and they're secure and, and location, but the $100 you know, iPod does the same thing for a retail worker or a $150 Android phone for a, for a mobile worker. And how do you monetize that? How does that so work? it's six dollars per user per month for for companies that use that. And the main difference is companies get a uh, a private network and central administration. But of course, the vast majority of the use is is with the individuals who use the the free consumer version. Excellent, very good. Now, tell us about some of these uh, very practical applications that uh, may may not have been anticipated. Uh, by people when they found themselves in a crisis, like the so-called so Cajun Navy yeah. uh, boats going out into neighborhoods to find people and rescue them out of their houses and had to coordinate that information. What can you tell us about that? It's, uh, it wasn't a complete surprise because radio has always been a go-to go communication tool when the stakes are high. Um, again, it's live voice. You can hear emotion. You can communicate. You can organize large groups of people very efficiently. And really the first... Um, inkling we've had in, in these crisis situations is um, in, in various countries, Zello has been the number one overall app. And it, it started in, uh, in Turkey, and this is the, the, the Arab Spring, and um, in Egypt. The government of Venezuela shut down Zello during the height of, of, of their troubles, which unfortunately haven't ended a few years ago. Um, also in Ukraine, Zello was the number, number one overall app. Um, uh, another use case that we had seen before Harvey that I'll get to here in a second is the uh, South Africa has a terrible crime problem and they have built a crowdsourced kind of a, a neighborhood watch on steroids, a 911 
backup around Zello across the whole country with you know, millions of people that use it. Um, it's been very effective there. So the, the group Cajun Navy gets the credit. If anybody saw the news or, or watched what happened with uh, Hurricane Harvey especially, but also Irma and, um, and some others, they, they came together after, um, after Katrina, seeing you know, the, the problem, the, the hole there. Um, and uh, I love the name, the, the Cajun Navy, but they, they came to Houston um, for Harvey and Zella was first used because um, they, they had some, some attention and they've used, they've, over, the, over multiple incidents, they've learned that Zello works really great. So they said, if, if you can help, you know, get on Zello. If you need help, get on Zello. And so there were thousands and thousands of, of people uh, who came from Texas and, and, and nearby with trucks and boats and chainsaws and fuels. And so as they're on the highway driving, they're finding Zello channels and they're finding these dispatchers that, that emerged kind of bottom up who are, are sending them to the right places. And then as people are needing help, they're finding Zello channels and getting on and asking for help. So it was, it was, it was very effective, very exciting. Um, Zello was just the communication tool. It was these, you know, these thousands of volunteers in the, in the management efforts that, that they brought to bear that was so effective. So is this an example of the internet and new technology undercutting or supplementing uh, the traditional way that uh, people would have addressed this. In prior disasters, prior hurricanes, so the one in New Orleans, for example, and, and that whole uh, area uh, along the south coast, uh, didn't have this technology available. So very few people would have had the ability to have that kind of instant uh, communication because only the police, fire and rescue uh, organizations would have the big traditional uh, walkie-talkie type devices, and now you've got uh, everybody able to communicate with everybody else who has a device and has put this app on the device. Uh, that, that's it. So supplementing, um, there's some overlap, and there's plenty of room to improve. Maybe we can we can get into of you know how do these public agencies who have the rule of law right and are structured and and trained um, work better with with a huge number of volunteers, but forever. Um, uh, you know, a disaster recovery means you set up a tent on site, um, hand out radios that cost, as I said, a thousand, fifteen hundred dollars. You know, protocols for who can use them. If you have a radio, you're you're pretty special, um, and and there's a command structure that's uh, been created around that. So we saw with uh, with Harvey and also Irva, Irma and and uh, another example in Puerto Rico and another one in Mexico. I could get to if you like, but. Now everybody has a radio, right? Anybody that has a mobile phone can download an app and it's all taking advantage of the infrastructure that, you know, that makes this possible. It's reliable, it's super fast, it's, a, it's available to, uh, to everybody. And not only that, they don't have to be on site. So what we saw was uh, these dispatchers that emerged as they put together within hours, an amazingly effective um, process for you know, who gets help, what's the channel structure look like? What, you know, what are the rules? How do you get people um, effective? Uh, and these dispatchers didn't need to be in the tent. In fact, um, half of them were out of state. Some were in New one of the best was in New Jersey, working from their bedroom, you know, on a mobile phone. And so, you know, it's this, it's this wonderful infrastructure that, uh, you know, that we can take advantage of um, that's gonna happen bottom up because it's there and, and, and people can get to it and they, and they wanna help. And that's not how most people are using it. This is something that uh, families are deploying so they can talk to uh, maybe a, uh, a parent or uh, someone else who's uh, living by themselves and this is their, their means of communicating Lots, with the rest of their family. Lo there's so many use cases um, and a really broad demographic of the kinds of people that use, use Zello, but um, friends and family would be one, right? You want a, a ski trip, there's really no reason to buy walkie-talkies, right? You're gonna have great data coverage on the slopes. Or you're going camping, probably the same. Um, or you have a chat group with your friends, uh, you wanna organize a, a, a young people going out to the bar, right? Perfect for that. Or um, it's also popular um, for connecting with people you don't know through these, there's millions of these public channels. And often they're about a topic, you know, the Austin Mini Cooper Club, and they have a road rally. And so everybody's going to get on a Zello channel for that rally. Um, or there's a channel called the Glasgow channel, uh, a profanity laden, it's fun to listen to when you're drinking, you know, with your buddies. Um, or a weather watcher, you know, storm chaser channels or um, uh, religious evangelization uh, channels or all sorts of, of these public channels. So it's, it's usually one of those two use cases.
Very good. And how has uh, network infrastructure played a role in innovations like Zello? Yeah, well, they, I mean, it's just, it's been so exciting. I spent the first half of my career in enterprise networking and early, you know, internet protocols and that sort of thing. Um, and so you fast forward, you know, now 20, 30 years and unbelievable, you know, these, these devices everybody has in their pocket that are so cheap and so fast and so, and so great. And so companies like Zello, there's 23 people, you know, in the company um, with 120 million users and, and, you know, making a difference in, and just the, you know, the leverage and the power that those, you know, these layers of technologies, is, you know, have had on society is, it's been so much fun to watch and so exciting and, 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 and it wouldn't exist in any way whatsoever, you know, had that not existed. So with that in mind, what role do you see the public having in encouraging that kind of uh, investment in infrastructure that's necessary to make something like Zello work? Um, well, as a free market style guy, this will be personal. Um, uh, you know, be careful and let's not fix what's not broken. It's worked extraordinarily well with a relatively, you know, like uh, touch, pl plenty, plenty, plenty of problems. Um, you know, one of the things that, that's become clear to me at Zello um, through the emergencies, you, you brought this up early, is earlier was, you know, how much is supplement, you know, how, how, you know what's friend, what's foe. Um, but it's clearly, it's clearly friend um, and it's also easy to see that the official organizations um, are, you know, look in um, where where I think you can help and 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 senior people can help by you know looking out like what what's happening here and whether it came from inside this organization or not. It's you know let, how, how do we best use these you know these new technologies and alternatives um, that are moving so much faster because they're in such a different environment than than inside large organizations. So you're a Texas-based company. Yeah. Is that uh, a decision made to locate there, uh, or is it that you were there and the company's there? Because oh, very purposeful. Um, the, the, so the company TuneIn really was built in Texas, and we moved to Palo Alto um, for venture investors and to hire people. And it was it was in, it was in in, uh, in Dallas, and um, Zello came out of some of the same team. And the in the the short list was, you know, do we move this to San Francisco, Palo Alto? or to Austin, Texas, and we, we chose Austin um, with no regrets. It's a, um, Texas is a wonderful business climate. Austin has a, a pretty and sell in Austin, but it really is a fabulous place um, with, uh, with a culture that, um, you, you know, the slogan is keep Austin weird. It, it, uh, <laughs> um, and it's true, there's, it, in every dimension, you know, it accepts uh, unorthodox behavior and thinking. Um, there's a top, you know, uh, world-class university there. <laughs> Uh, and it's very easy to, to uh, encourage people to move to Austin um, where we don't have the talent we need locally. So it's, that's been a, a great decision on our part. So what should states and cities be thinking about in uh, trying to attract uh, investment and uh, businesses and tech talent like you brought together with Zello? Yeah, it's, I, I, I wonder how much you know, they, they can do um, uh, you know, st stay out of the way would be one, you know, one answer. Um, again, a light touch. Um, uh, it does feel like um, so much of it needs to be organic. A university has is, is got to be a key wherever you see these technology communities working, and I guess government can help quite a lot there. So before Zello, uh, you founded TuneIn, an audio streaming service, and many of you may not know it, but you've uh, listened to TuneIn. Uh, TuneIn streams podcasts and audio through Amazon's Alexa and other smart home devices. Tell us about TuneIn and your journey from TuneIn to Zello. Sure. Um, and the, the journey to TuneIn started early in my career. I wanted a company um, and went through, you know, way too long getting ready. You know, I have to learn all these different disciplines. Um, and so my own story was 9-11 happened and at the year I was 40 years old and I thought well it's it's a wake-up call it's it's you know it's time to do it and the original idea was TiVo for radio because from from high school I'd wanted a TiVo for radio I love audio I love radio um, and I thought okay uh, uh, VCR for radio now there's a TiVo let me build that to, to learn not many people want that um, but uh, uh, through a, a, a pretty tough period, five, six, seven years, um, of, of, of 
supporting connected devices for a radio feature, um, the iPhone came out with apps and it exploded and, and quickly became a top overall app, top 50 app for, for quite a while uh, in most of the markets around the globe. Um, and then finally about that time we, we had a knock from uh, Sequoia Capital who said, hey, we like what's going on, why don't, uh, uh, why don't we help? Why don't you move this to Palo Alto? We did. Um, I wasn't there too much longer. And uh, um, about that time, Zello was really the brainchild of a guy, Alex Gavrilov, who's the founder and CTO. And he and his team had, had done such great work from St. Petersburg, Russia. So we had used you know, this um, amazing development team. And I had tried to get a handful of those people uh, into tune, tune in with some success. He was a holdout. Um, so I'm out of tune in and he starts to get some traction with Zello, which I was immediately drawn to because it's a different kind of radio. It's, uh, we call it social radio, but instead of being, you know, one to many, um, it, it can be that, but it's about live, you know, conversations, pure conversations. And when you listen to Zello or listen to these, these, these channels, you, you hear the, you know, the power in it that we, people, um, have Zello campouts. They send us their Zello pictures. If you search Facebook for Zello, you'll see you know tens of thousands of of these communities that come together. So it's a pretty easy decision to to uh, to be able to help Alex in a way that he needed this you know group of uh, uh, unbelievable talent from St. Petersburg, Russia, who needed some business help. Um, and that was the point we moved to uh, to Austin. So here in the room, we have a lot of uh, people engaged in uh, uh, internet technology, public policy issues. Uh, but we also have some entrepreneurs here, and uh, online we have uh, lots of uh, people who are sure. starting up their own uh, tech companies. Any advice you'd give them? Well, you've, the, had, you've had two successes. Yeah, yeah, two successes, and I guess um, uh, one major mistake was uh, making decisions because you're afraid, because it's hard. And when I look back, most of my mistakes have been because of that, right? You're doing something because you're afraid of, of what may go wrong. Um, and uh, in the case of TuneIn, we, we really had no revenue model, and so that was, there was good reason to be afraid for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Independent, and, and so, um, you know, happily with, with Zello, uh, we have a wonderful revenue model, um, and both because I'm a little more experienced and mature, but also because there's cash in the bank, I'm not nearly as afraid, and, and uh, so you find a revenue model, you know, that works where you're not dependent on, uh, outside money coming in for too long, because that's, that's pretty risky business. So these companies have a bit of a, a connection between the two as well. Uh, radio has, in recent years, been viewed as kind of old tech, yeah. uh, as opposed to electric cars or the Internet of Things. Uh, what, is your, what is your take on that? Why is radio such an exciting innovation for you? Well, I, you know, I let off. It's, um, Radio is about voice, right? It's music, or it's news, or talk, or sports, um, or conversations, or podcast is a form of radio. Um, it is, is such a fundamental part of, of being human. And um, so it's been around forever. And as, as radio, you know, or, or phone calls, is it, is it AM, or is it FM, or is it ham radio, or CB radio? Um, is it satellite radio? You know, those are really incidental, but the, the medium itself is, is very exciting. It's, um, uh, as an advertising medium, it's phenomenal, right? It's somebody you trust, you know, in, in your head as a, um, as, a, as a way of solving problems, as a way of passing time. Um, and one of the great things about radio is it's a companion. You, you can enjoy radio, you can enjoy audio while you're doing something else. You know, so unlike a video, um, you can be driving and listening or running um, and listening. And so it's, you know, it's a medium that's, that's always with you. Um, and in the, in the Zello version, it's a medium, as I explained, that has so much power to communicate um, compared to text, but it doesn't have the barriers or the, or the cost of a video. It doesn't have the, you know, the social barriers. When are you going to turn on your Skype camera? You know, it's a, it's a pretty high bar before most people are comfortable versus when would you would you turn on your, your microphone? So as a, um, you know, as a, a fundamental uh, that, uh, that we enjoy as humans, it's so important, uh, isn't going away. Uh, it's, a, it's a great mix with technology. I'm so excited about Alexa and these new voice control applications, you know, that are, that are creating a whole other wave of, of uh, audio entertainment. So TuneIn streams a lot of sports. 
uh, including my favorite Major League Baseball. Uh, and I'm wondering, uh, is the future of TuneIn live events, like sports or music and so on? Uh, TuneIn has been anchored on live from the beginning, and it's, it's one of the things that's so special about radio. It's, you know, it's live. It's happening now. There's something special about that. And, of course, sports really demand live. And so uh, in TV and radio, both, both there's a recognition that that's, you know, that's, a, that's a core. Um, uh, advertising, audio advertising is a pretty tough business. TuneIn's moved to uh, be building a subscription option, which is, which is great because it's tough for, it's also true for podcast and other, you know, the talent on the other end. There's really still not yet a, a great digital market for audio, for audio ads, but uh, sports is important, news, talk, and of course music. Excellent. Good. Have time for some questions, Jerry? Well, it's, um, you need some kind of data connection. There was some bad information um, really at the start of uh, uh, Florida, um, the hurricanes. It worked with, without, by magic, I guess. I don't know. But no, it needs, it needs um, a network. It could be any kind of network. It could be Wi-Fi um, or it could be cell. But it works well on 2G networks, and it's worked well around the globe in countries that have really terrible networks. And it typically works when nothing else works. And so that's one of the reasons it's been been popular in crisis situations, but you've got you've got to have something. More questions? Yes, sir. <clears throat> sure. Oh, uh, my name is Kerry Hinton. I'm with the D.C. Public Service Commission. The uh, federal government and states are investing, frankly, billions of dollars in deploying a nationwide first net network. The description of uh, Zello sounds like it would eliminate the need for that type of investment. Am I? misunderstanding what uh, your service provides? Well, uh, first responders need a reliable network. They need to be able to communicate between agencies. There's a need, I am sure, for FirstNet style technologies. I, I, uh, and I'm not that close to FirstNet. Um, our, our business traction is really in, in the commercial sector um, first, although we have some, some government business. That uh, these agencies need a network um, that's reliable, where they can communicate between organizations. Um, it doesn't need to be radio. I think that's it's been tough for these agencies. Um, it, you know, f as a citizen, you look at the amount of spectrum that's allocated for public service. Um, f you know, for technologies that are reliable, they've been around a long time. But the real life reliability of, of today's cell networks, uh, you know, are unbelievable. And so applications like Zello can, you know, can ride over the top without you know, without uh, all the money or, or complications, um, and uh, are certainly are well suited. Zell is well suited for citizens, and you know this this match of, of citizens and and agencies. I'm pretty excited about you know how can Zello um, help help do better there. I am informed we have time for one more question. Your hand went up first. Thank you, gentlemen. My name is Laura Lai Kelly. I'm at Georgetown. Um, I work with Congress on bringing it into the 21st century. So I'd be really interested in, in, <laughs> in hearing uh, both of your opinions on this. Um, so Congress is really uh, not um, sort of not kept up with uh, digital technology. Certainly, it's also just working at a 45 percent less capacity on expertise than it had in the 1970s. How do you measure that? Um, I can actually get you the data. I'd like and, to see it. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah, no, it is. There's, it's only been recently that there's been longitudinal data. It's things like um, 30 to 50% of hearings that are happening. So there's whole deliberative functions that have fallen off the radar screen for many reasons. Um, the uh, one idea that some of us have is that we create, um, through technology and data and social media, sort of C-SPAN channel four, which doesn't exist right now. But it would be a civic purpose channel that has sort of a, cura a curation purpose for Congress that sort of breaks through the sort of time and space restrictions that this you know, old marble institution has um, to uh, find uh, and locate optimal knowledge 
from people's own constituents in their districts. And I know, Mr. Goodlatte, you, you have been on top of the internet forever and w w was a co-founder of the caucus in the 90s, I believe, um, when I worked on the Hill. And it seems like now it's possible to do this. But the problem is there's really no, as you put it, there's no revenue model um, for Congress. It's a public serving organization. And the privatization of this kind of service would be uh, a disaster, I think, um, unless there were really strict rules put around it uh, to protect it. Um, do you see this as something that props possibly the technology and data industry might do on, on behalf of democratic institutions? Well, uh Yes, I guess would be the short answer. You know, how, how, what's realistic? How much, you know, can we help? You know, one of the lessons from Harvey back to something scale is these self-organizing um, with the right infrastructure and the right rules um, respond to meet the needs uh, uh, of society in such a wonderful way, right? I mean, of course, a, a free market is, is based on that principle, not totally. Um, would a Wikipedia-style market work for, you know, the, the public dissemination and, and orchestration and um, of, of that. I don't know. So that's way outside of my, my zone of expertise. But um, I know at Zello, um, we're totally satisfied when you see what you've worked on be used for good and make a difference in, in society. And I am sure that, that that's true for every, most every other technology business. So there's a challenge for both of us. So I think we are the last thing standing between you and lunch. Uh, and therefore, we're going to get out of the way, and uh, uh, Tim will, or someone will tell you how to go about getting lunch. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.